Rain Limited. You've probably come across it before, even if you didn't realize it. Ever seen a Fortune 9 too many requests, Zahor? That's a rate limiter at work protecting a resource from being overwhelmed. Or maybe you've used a service with a specific request quota tied to your payment plan. Same concept, just more transparent. Rate limiting isn't just about setting boundaries, though. It serves so many purposes, protecting resources, ensuring fair access, managing system load, cutting costs, and even preventing downtime. Take Figma as an example. When they face their first spam attack, bad actors sending massive document invites to random email addresses, they use the Redis-powered rate limiter to stop it. Without that, Figma could have been stuck with sky-high email delivery costs and a damaged reputation. What about Stripe? Their team realized that just throwing more infrastructure at traffic problems wasn't enough. They needed a more smart way to prevent individual users, whether through bad scripts or outright abuse, from monopolizing resources. These examples show how versatile rate limiting can be. It's not just about keeping things running smoothly, it's about creating a more fair, more efficient system. But here's the tricky part. It's not why you need a rate limiter that's hard to figure out. The real challenge is how to build one that's efficient and tailored to your needs. So why Redis? Let's talk about that. Redis has become the go-to tool for building RAID limiters, and it's easy to see why. It's fast, reliable, and has some powerful features like atomic operations, Lua scripting, and data persistence. Take GitHub as another example. When they needed a scalable RAID limiting solution, they switched it to a Redis-backed setup with client-side sharding. This let them handle distributed traffic patterns and fix tricky issues like replication and consistency while staying fast and reliable. That's the power of Redis, speed, versatility, and scalability. But choosing Redis is just step one. What really matters is how you use it. So let's break down the most common rate limiting patterns you can build with Redis. Leaky bucket. Think of a bucket with a small hole at the bottom. Requests are added to the bucket and they drip out at a steady rate. This keeps the flow predictable and avoids sudden floods. You use it when you need smooth traffic shaping like for streaming services or payment gateways. But here's the downside. It doesn't handle bursts well. So if you're running a flash sale, this probably isn't the one for you. Token bucket. Now imagine a bucket that fills up with tokens at a fixed rate. Each request uses up a token, and as long as there are tokens, bursts of requests are allowed. This is great for APIs expecting occasional traffic spikes like during login search or checkout processes. But be aware, the token replenishment logic can add slight overhead in distributed setups. Fixed window counter. This one tracks requests in fixed time windows, like counting how many requests happen in a minute. Once the limit is hit, no more requests are allowed until the window resets. It's simple and works well for low traffic APIs like hobbyist projects. But watch out for boundary stacking. A user could send 100 requests in the last second of a minute and another 100 in the first second of the next, sneaking in twice the limit. Sliding window lock. Here's the precise option. It locks timestamps for every request and enforces limit based on a rolling time window. This is perfect for critical systems like financial transactions or fraud detection. And the trade-off, it's resource intensive. If you're handling millions of users, this could get expensive in terms of memory and CPU. Sliding window counter. This one's the middle ground. Instead of logging every request, it breaks the time window into smaller chunks and aggregate counts. It's less precise than the sliding window log, but it's more efficient and works well for APIs where you need a balance between accuracy and resource usage. By the way, if you want to see how these patterns are implemented, I've created dedicated videos for each one, walking you through the code step by step. You can find the links in the description below. Check them out. And all right, so those are the most common patterns. Now let's talk about how to pick the one that's the right for you. When choosing a rate limiting strategy, think about these key questions. Number one, what's your traffic like? If it's predictable, leaky bucket can keep things smooth. If it's bursty, token bucket is your friend. And if it's all over the place, go with sliding window counter for flexibility. Number two, how precise do you need to be? For critical APIs like banking, sliding window log is your best bet. But if you can tolerate slight approximations, sliding window counter works just fine. Now, what's your scale? High traffic systems need efficient algorithms. 
Fixed window counter is lightweight, while token bucket offers a great balance. Redis helps here too with atomic operations and Lua scripting to make scaling easier. And finally, what about user experience? Fixed window approaches can frustrate users because of rigid resets. Sliding window methods smooth those out and make things feel more fair. At the end of the day, rate limiting isn't just about stopping bad actors or preventing overload. It's about creating a system that's efficient, fair, and user-friendly. And with Redis, you have the tools to do just that. So stay curious, experiment, and build something amazing. And that's all for now. Thanks for watching. Be sure to check out those links in the description, and I'll see you next time.